both parties in the relationship have to do their part. There are marriages, re relationships ending because everyone is not doing their part or one person is doing their part and the other person isn't. It's just how it goes. Most successful relationships, marriages are with two people doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is an agreement that you make in the beginning. So if you are in a relationship right now, you make that agreement with your partner on how you want things to be done from then and on out. Things do change, but you need the, you know, most important things in the beginning because relationships and marriages end, it don't take long. Month or two, someone's already ending it. So it needs to be established from the beginning. Now, how you do that is if you're in the dating world, you need to have qualified topics to talk about with your potential whoever. So don't just go there talking about, you know, I don't know, what's your favorite food, what's your favorite basketball team or anything. Those type of things are not going to sustain a healthy relationship. So I just wanted to break a little bit of that down. If you want to see more of topics like that, please go to my page, Dating to Marriage Support, on um, YouTube, here on Facebook, and Dating to Marriage Support on um, TikTok. I have a lot of videos discussing various topics and common problems. Um, but today, I wanted to, you know, make people understand that, you know, the un understand the true definition of, definition of happiness. Most of the time, people listen to unsuccessful people talking about relationships and marriages. People, when I say unsuccessful, I'm saying ones who are not married anymore or in, or is not even in a relationship. I'm not saying that all of them um, don't bring um, valuable advice. It's just a lot of them are not because they're only going to go based off of a negative experience instead of using the negative experience and turning it into a positive. What they'll say is, hey, don't be with that person at all. Matter of fact, you should just stay single. Stuff like that is not going to help you. So make sure that you are inquiring advice from successful people who are in successful relationships, marriages, or whatever. But I wanted to talk about a story, um, a few stories, but I'm going to start with one. So I want to ask everyone... Um, let's see. I have a question. Okay, so someone asked, how do you deal with anger? So obviously this is a relationship page. So we're talking about anger within the relationship with another person, uh, which obviously could help you besides have, you know, being in a relationship, but it'll help you just in life in general. But how I deal with anger is I just, I mean, I can, it's hard to say don't get angry, but there's certain triggers for people um, that can anger them. So first of all, it's, it's best to eliminate the trigger. Everyone is triggered by something, but you can still kind of like suppress it a little bit. Like don't be so bothered by stuff. Just understand that people are going to disappoint you. If you still, if you walk around with the reality that no one's going to disappoint you or um, because they care about you or they love you, they're not going to disappoint you, that's false. Like, that's fantasy world. People are going to disappoint you. Not because they want to. Some people are not purposely dis disappointing anyone. Some people just do things because that's just, I don't know what it is they feel like doing, not understanding that it's going to, hurt somebody else. So there's two different forms of intentional and intentional. So I say eliminate the triggers. Don't get easily bothered by stuff. Try to, oh, it's not that big. So, when, so basically when you get triggered, triggered, just say to yourself, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Just keep saying it. Even if you don't believe it, just say it. Because if you start saying it, you'll start believing it and then eventually it'll just go away. Now there's far, far more things that are serious 
that you can't just let go, right? Um, obviously, physical abuse, mental abuse, stuff like that. Um, I'm not saying to just brush it under the rug. Just have a conver healthy conversation um, with that person about that. And then if they can't seem to understand or if they're, you know, doing it on purpose, people that do stuff in, um, on purpose, you should kind of like dismiss them away from your life. Because if you keep people that are purposely doing things to you, then that means that you want to always be angry. If you don't want to always be angry, then just get rid of it. That's how it works. Um, so... Um, now when anger is happening, like I said, you just d dismiss the, the triggers that's making you angry. Sometimes we fall short. No one is perfect. I'm just giving you tips on how these things work. Now there's going to be time where they might catch you slipping, right? You might have had a bad day. So most of the time when you have a bad day, you're going to get angry quicker. You're not thinking about, oh, let me tell myself this is not going to piss me off. Okay, stuff like that. So if that happens, um, just don't show, like, facial expressions are everything. So don't show that you are mad and also your tone of voice. Don't um, use a tone that might trigger somebody else to be mad because of how you said something. Typically that happens all the time in relationships. So in relationships, your tone of voice matters to the extreme. So um, I'm gonna use simple examples. Like I said, there's things that are more serious, but I, I'm only gonna speak about simple examples unless someone um, puts a specific example, then I could talk about that. So a, a simple example means if, um, if someone, um, I don't know, some people are neat freaks, right? So let's say your wife or girlfriend wakes up out of the bed and she doesn't make the bed, right? To clean freaks, that will piss them off, okay? So, now, she's she's done it 20 times, and you keep telling her, make the bed, make the bed, make the bed. She doesn't make the bed. All right, now it's the 20, 21. We're on, on time 21. You just, you see how I keep breathing? <laughs> okay, you just kind of like breathe, say, okay, it's not that serious. She's really not that clean. Right, so maybe I should teach her how to be clean, and then you politely, instead of just yelling, "Oh, you didn't make the bed, make the bed," blah blah blah, you know, you're just yelling or saying something in a tone that's very rude or sarcastic, you know, asshole-ish. That's not a word, but you know what I'm saying. Those type of uh, that type of tone is going to trigger that person not to listen to you at all. So you want to make sure that you are polite. That's it. Polite when you speak, regardless if you're annoyed or not. Just be polite when you speak and then kindly address the situation. Now, you do that, they still might piss you off with a response and you kindly respond back. And then if it's not ready, like some people are just not ready to accept things, then you just let it go. And then you address it later. Okay. I don't know if that was long and drawn out, but that's um, my input on how do you deal with anger. If anybody else wants to put a question, please put a question. I will answer it. So thank you, husband, for that. Okay. Now, I want to talk about a story. Um, and it's going to be about a woman. So this lady divorced her husband because he was boring. Now, I don't know if 
that sounds a little insane to you, but it sounds insane to me. I will say it again. A woman divorced her husband for being boring. Okay. Back in the day, I had a conversation with a stranger and this is what she told me. Now, I was not married at this time, but I do learn from observation and experiences from other people. And it stuck with me to this day. So when I used to do hair and all of that, she was one of my clients. Like I said, a stranger. I don't do her hair no more. She's not going to see this video. But if she does, I hope you're listening. So I asked her, I said, hey, okay, so you're divorcing him because he's boring. Any other reason? I'm thinking she's going to tell me cheating or whatever. She doesn't say that he's cheated. She said that he's very loyal. Okay, so very loyal. That's a plus. You check that off because that's what most people want as a loyal person. Cool. You can't find too many of that. So he has that. Okay, is he mentally and physically abusing you? She says no. I said, cool. That's like a thousand checks right there because a lot of people are doing that domestic violence, right? Okay. I said, so what else? Like, it can't just be that he's boring. So she goes, oh, um, we, um, he's not spontaneous. I said, okay, you know, most people like, spon most women like spontaneous guys and spontaneous things to happen. Okay. He's not spontaneous. All right. Okay. So I said, okay, he's not spontaneous, but when, so when you guys go on vacation or you plan a vacation and you ask him, Hey, do you want to go with me? What does he say? She goes, Oh, he's, he comes with me. He agrees to everything that I say. So, okay. Awesome. He agrees to everything that you say in a sense of going, being spontaneous with you. Okay, that's good because just because he's not spontaneous, but you're planning spontaneous events and he goes, mm -hmm. that means that he's kind of spontaneous. It's just that he doesn't know how to plan a vacation. And matter of fact, he's not thinking about that because he has other plans for himself, right? Okay, so he goes though. Most people are not agreeable. You'll say, hey, let's go on a trip and they're just going to say no. Or if they go on the trip, okay, now they're really just sitting the same thing that they were doing at the house, which was watching TV or whatever. They're going to do that when they go on vacation. So I asked him, I said, okay, cool. So he went, how is the vacation with him? She said that it's fun. Cool. So now you're not telling me any issues. You're just saying that he's boring. But, but at the same time, you knew he was boring be before you married him, right? So if that was a deal breaker for you, you should have never married him. That's how I look at it. Always have serious conversations when you're dating because those type of things are important. I'm not saying that anyone should, should divorce or end a relationship because of that. Well, I say marriage. In, re, in dating and relationships, you find out those type of things that you just can't deal with. And it's like nothing that no one could do about it. Then you just don't proceed. But if you're already in the marriage I wouldn't say just go ahead and divorce somebody for something so silly. I believe that that's a silly thing to do. Nice man, loyal man. He does kind of whatever you ask. Cool. That sounds like a happy marriage to me. So that's story number one. If anyone has a comment about that story and what are your thoughts or if you have a question about it or do you agree or not agree, please comment below. And then we could talk about it some more. All right. So there's another story. Um, so there's a man. This man took this woman out on a few dates. Um, so basically, man takes woman on an adventurous date, but she is dissatisfied. Okay. So the reason why she was dissatisfied is because the man took her out on um, a date to go to the shooting range, which was date number one or two or whatever. And then another date was, what is it, bow and arrow. And then the other date was, um, what is it, something that's in that, there's something where you crash, they have these um, 
places where you could take a hammer and start destroying things. Whole bunch of, I never heard of that one, but it's a whole, it's many different things you could do today. So basically all of those dates were um, dangerous or, you know, you got um, gun range, um, bow and arrow, and then smashing, destroying things. So all of those are like dangerous things. And it's like, wow, that frightens me. So now after like, I don't know, the fourth date or so, um, she didn't want to date him anymore because of the date selections that he chose. Now, as a woman, I guess I would say, wow, that's weird. Why are we going out, you know, to these crazy uh, things, you know, to do? But at the same time, you know, that shouldn't make you not want to date because maybe you should just ask the person why did you why did you choose these type of dates i feel like people are not they're always like picking at something but they're not asking the person why or give me your opinion on this they're not doing that all they're doing is oh he took me out on those three or four crazy dates he's crazy and then They'll block the person and dismiss the person all the way. That's not how you communicate. I'm going to block you because you took me on these crazy adventurous dates. No, you're, you guys are adults. So how about you just ask him or anyone who has similar experiences or might in the future have a uh, um, you know, similar experience. Always ask the question. Give that person a chance to give their input and then based off of what the person says so the person could say hey well i took you on this these dates because i wanted to show that i could protect you right that's like oh wow okay now it's going to change your thought on him or her or whatever it's going to be perfect you're going to you're not going to like everything about a person my rule which i always tell people is 80 20 I could say 70 30 but I'm gonna say 80 20 you want the most out of that you can get when you settle down so 80 cool this is this person is 80% of what I want that 20% eh, whatever right you just doesn't matter and the same with you. You think the person likes you all the way, like you don't annoy them, you know? That's, that sounds insane. You're probably at 80, 20 for that person too. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You sit here trying to find somebody perfect, you're going to be looking forever. They're, they're not out there. Why? Because we're human. We're going to make mistakes. And we're going to piss each other off sometimes. We're going to annoy each other sometimes. It is what it is. I, so in the comments, someone said, I want 99%. <laughs> okay, whatever. Now, everybody too, hey, you know, hi, everyone who's watching. This is my first live, okay? Continue to come and watch me grow. I'm very new to this. I just started doing um, dating to marriage type of videos, topics. But my pages are growing, especially on TikTok. I have a lot of engagement there. I don't have much engagement on Facebook like that, yes and no. But, well, someone just commented somewhere on one of my posts. I have so many people commenting and, and liking and, and just telling me I'm doing a good job with these type of videos on a daily basis. But I am still new, so I don't have many people just watching, but I will. So join and please tag along my journey. And you can say, hey, this is where I started because I don't have many views, but that's okay. I'm going to do this video because it's important. Okay. My husband is one of my biggest supporters. Do a live on IG. Yeah, you know, I had that set up. But see, I need to have another device. <laughs> okay, I have... I have another device, but I, I need to have another device. And I'm going, I'm going to do that next time. I'm going to be more prepared. So right now, I'm just getting all the things not to do right now. So thanks for staying with me.
Um, my husband says he wants 99% of a perfect person. Well, I guess that means I'm 99%. <laughs> nah, I don't know. He's, he's just joking. That's just what I think. I think people should get 80, get an 80% of a person. You're not, I don't see. Now, if you get 99, hey, they, you check everything off the list. That's what's up. But a hundred is not happening. Now, if someone could comment below and say they got that, and that means that y'all got no problems, y'all don't have arc or no one should be having an argument, but no one is having, you know, disputes in some sort. You guys agree on everything. Come on. That's, that's, that's not real life. So no one has a hundred. Okay. Um, now, let's see. I have another story. Oh, okay. The next story is this man lies to potential dates that he is, he is a doctor. So a man on one of, or a few of the dating sites goes on there and lies that he is a MD, a doctor. Now, um, I don't, they didn't disclose what type of, um, job that he has, but obviously it's not a doctor and that doctor type of money. Um, now I'm going to tell you more details about the story in a minute. I just want to put my insight just on that <laughs> red flags. Exactly. People are the biggest con artists, um, catfish out. But this is what I think. For someone to lie about something like that, that, hear me, hear me out. That means that they're trying to be something that, that is, we're talking about a man now. So that man is trying to be something that most women want. You get what I'm saying? Because if, why would he say doctor? Okay, doctor means that you make a lot of money, right? So he said doctor because most women want a man with money. If he said janitor, ain't nobody, excuse me, most women are not going to go for that. Why? Because it's dirty. And two, because janitors don't make that much money to them. To them. I, don't, I didn't say janitors don't make money. They don't make enough money to most women. So he had to go on there and literally lie and say he is a doctor. Like, okay, cool. Guess what happened after that? Y'all ready? Four women he was able to go on a date with because of that. He put some other stuff on there about, oh, he's a good person. He cares about people or oh, whatever. He's embarrassed in who he is. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. After, okay, so he got four women to go on a date with him. Right? Now, he sexually assaulted these women. That's crazy, right? He sexually assaulted them. That sounds like a desperate, um, sex-deprived man to go on there, lie about who he is, and then sexually assault them. He's not, that means he doesn't get any play from anybody. He doesn't even have, doesn't go on dates because of who he is. They didn't say who he was. I would try to find the story. I, I would try to find, no, not the story. I got the story. I would try to find the end because I don't know like what he actually, who he is and what he actually did. They didn't put that because he sexually assaulted them. All four of them. So he fooled four women. <laughs> like, so... That's sad. So the four women that he sexually assaulted, 
got food, got played, because I'm just saying, they wanted that type of man. So they fell for it. He knew what he was doing. He was smart. Most women want guys with money, period. It doesn't matter. Even me, right? I want someone with money, but it doesn't have to be doctor money, right? It just needs to be you can pay for an apartment, one bedroom studio, whatever. It doesn't have to be that type of money. You get what I'm saying? These women that wanted that rich, you not that's not rich, but you know, high earner money um person, high value person, they fell for it. And then they fell for it so much that he was able to sexually assault them. That means that he was able to take them to a hotel willingly. They were willingly able to go because they felt they were gonna gain something from it. No, they didn't gain a damn thing except being assaulted. So now he's crazy. I'm not saying that he's crazy for doing all that, but I think that's why he did it. Because he don't have to say all that. He said all of that because most women want that. As simple as that. Now, yes, uh, someone said that went left. Yes, it did. Wow. He's embarrassed in who he is. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, that's, that's, that sounds like it could be true that he's embarrassed, um, on who he is. Unfortunately, that's really sad. He has no, um, confidence in himself. Who knows? He could have been bullied when he was young up until adult. I don't know. Because he's so embarrassed that he had to go in there and do that. Um, he's probably, he never know. He probably didn't even have, he probably had a decent job. Like, who knows? But it wasn't good enough. So he made, you know, he did that. I have the link. See, if I get the link, I'm going to end it. I'm going to do better next time, y'all. This is my first. Hi, everyone who's watching. Who? Okay. Who are you talking about? Okay, I'm talking about a guy went on um, a dating app and lied to women saying that he was a doctor and um, he was able to get a few women that he was interested in or whoever fell for the lies um, get them out on a date take them to a nice hotel and he sexually assaulted them yeah Definitely a catfish. That's still going on. People catfish all the time, unfortunately. So um, anyone who's dating out there, you know, or if you know someone who's dating, just be, um, just look out for people. You know, just because you're not dating doesn't mean you can't, you know, give advice to somebody. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Four, four women he sexually assaulted. Four. Now he got caught, so now he's about to get penalized for that. But just, you know, stories like this just makes me think, like, wow, people are just so oblivious and naive, right? They just believe everything someone is saying. Like, you can check, I mean, unless he lied on all social media sites, you can check every um like you know go on facebook or whatever and type the person's name and just y'all watch catfish if you haven't seen catfish watch it go on look watch catfish and they're showing you how they're searching for people do an investigation before you even go on a date there's no there's no need for anybody to be catfish thank you Thank you so much. I, I still can't believe I'm in the 30s like you. <laughs> and you still look young too. You're next. Anyway, so people should not be getting catfished in 2022. I'm sorry. There's no way, no way in the world people are getting catfished. Why? Why are you getting catfished? 
everybody, <laughs> everybody watches Catfish. Need to go watch it again and study Neve and whatever their name is. So what do you suggest for someone trying to get out and date? Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I was reading something. Okay. So, so what do you suggest for someone trying to get out and date? Okay. Um, so regardless of what you do say, okay, someone said go to church. <laughs> yeah, that might, might be the safest. Um, I think, okay, re regardless of what I'm about to say, I do believe that people are actual con artists, okay? Like, so good, so good. They're using apps to do voiceovers and photoshops. Look at all these filters on um, social media. Like, I could put a filter on right now and look like a completely different person. But besides all that, we, I could tell you a thousand things on what you should do before you go on a date. But always remember, regardless of what you do, they still can get you. But at least you try. There's people out here that's not trying. They're just going on dates and just, oh, I just trust everybody. Don't trust a soul. Like, <laughs> don't trust nobody doesn't matter. I don't care if he lives in your, or her, they live in your neighbor. Don't trust nobody until you see for yourself, you know? Um, so someone says, got to be able to read people and ask the right questions. That's exactly what I was going to start talking about. And the person who said that is successfully married with a wonderful wife because they did all that and it didn't take long. Amazing. Their marriage is amazing, right? So you have to go and ask the right questions. You have to. Excuse me if you see background, but look, you have to ask the right questions. Okay, so what type of questions? I have a video about this. I have a video about this. Later on, I want you guys to come back to this live stream and I'm going to post the link um, in the comments. But I'm going to talk about it here. Um, so, questions, right? If I don't even think it matters on gender. So, what you want to know is um, what does matter sometimes? Okay. If you're a man, let's start with that. If you're a man, it depends on the type of woman that you're looking for. I don't know if you guys can hear me cause I definitely have the speaker down, whatever you guys can hear me. If you can't just say you can't hear me or, or you can't. Yeah. Um, if you're, if you're a guy, depends on the type of woman you're looking for. Most, most men are looking for a traditional type of um, woman. A traditional type of woman, if you don't know, is someone who cooks and cleans, right? So, okay, <laughs> you ask questions regarding those type of things. Hey, what's your favorite meal to make? You don't have to say, hey, can you cook or clean? No, have a conversation and you'll know if she could cook depending on what type of food she say. If she says spaghetti, she can't cook. I'm sorry. <laughs> if she says spaghetti, she can't cook, okay? No one that can cook is going to say, hey, I make good spaghetti. <laughs> okay? So that's how you know. If she says, hey, I can make, just think of something like that could be difficult. I don't know. Not everyone can make a good steak. So if she says my favorite thing to make is steak or something like that, 
like something that's not easy. Anybody could make spaghetti, okay? Now, just because she, I'm not saying no one can make spaghetti. I'm just saying spaghetti is not a difficult meal. Anybody could do that. So depending on what she said, cool. That's how you know she could cook. You ask her, hey, do you eat out a lot? My favorite restaurant is um, freaking Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Whatever. You just suggest your favorite restaurant. So now you're making it like, see, you're not interrogating them. There's tricks to it. You say, hey, my favorite, um, do you eat out a lot? My And you can continue. My favorite restaurant is whatever. Now you're not interrogating them. Just be smooth. So either she's going to say, no, I don't eat out a lot. I cook. They, they should be able to say that. Or they're going to say, yeah, I eat out a lot. All right. Because you asked them specifically. And then you made it more open for them to say yeah. Because if you say, hey, yeah, my favorite restaurant is, um, shit, whatever. And then she's going to be like, ooh, that's my favorite restaurant too. Matter of fact, I eat out all the time. Like, you <laughs> you making it, you know what I'm saying? Just, it's not tricking, but whatever you want to call it. You just want to get the answer. It doesn't matter. It's a date. Just get it out. Cool. Now, um, cleaning, you could ask that many different ways, you know, whatever, you just, whatever. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Someone said, don't have too high standards when you're going out on dates. Understand that people are not going to be perfect. Like I said earlier, find the 80, 20, not a hundred. You're not going to get it. So don't have high standards. They're not going to have everything you want, but they should have the most important thing. So when you're look, when you're going out on dates, look for the most important things in people. And most important are, are they a good person? This is for anybody. It doesn't matter the gender. Are they a good person? Are they caring? Do they love family? Are they self-absorbed? You don't want a self-absorbed person. That's not going to get you anywhere. I don't care who it is. Um, oh, this is a good one that no one is really thinking about. Ask about their job. Meaning... Oh, um, so what's your career or what do you do for a living? They're going to say, oh, I'm a, um, I'm a school teacher. <laughs> They're going to say, I'm a school teacher, right? And you don't say, oh, wow. Have you been at the same school for years, right? You want to know the loyalty that they have with a job. Because if they're not, to me, this is my opinion, if they're not loyal with a job, I don't know how you think they're going to be loyal with you. They can't keep a job, they're not going to keep you. That's how I look at it. Depends. Okay, that's the, <laughs> depends, it depends. But in most cases, that's just what it's going to be. Because obviously they keep stopping a job because they're unsatisfied when they should do their, do their due, due diligence. <laughs> said they're all wrong to find the right employer, right? This research. You're not gonna like every job, I'm not saying that. But if they've been to too many jobs, you're like, damn, that's more jobs I've been to in my whole life. Like, you don't trust people like that. Men, especially, I'm talking about. I'm really talking about men, not really women, but men, women too, but mostly men, because men, if you're trying to find a traditional household, men are providing paying bills. So if you can't keep a job, then you shouldn't keep him. Um, okay, someone said, but if you cook all the time, men will never wine and dine you. That's not true. Someone in the comments knows that's not true. Because someone in the comments, I believe wife cook all the damn time and he still wines and dines her. So it depends on the man. Even in my house, I'm the primary cook. And he still wines and dines me. So um, just find find a, a, a person who um, just cares for you. They know what you like. If they know you like to be wined and dined, they will do it. Now, what do you mean by wine and dine? Are you talking about wine and dining you with meals? Oh, let me scroll up.
Do you mean wine and dining you with meals? Like they're doing breakfast in bed? What are you talking about? Okay, the person who said that, when you say wine and dine, are you talking about breakfast in bed? Okay, and I'm going to scroll up again. Someone said meet them in church. I think I said that earlier. So someone said meet them. Okay, wait, they answered it. They're talking about dating, not if men chasing the dollar. Okay, so... <laughs> Not if men are chasing the dollar. Um, so you're saying if they're out working all the time, then they're not whining and dining you? If you're saying they're not working, if they're working all the time, then they're not whining and dining you? Or is that what you're talking about? Okay. I'm going to go up a little bit. Someone said meet them in church. Now with church, um, when it comes to religion, that's a very important thing to talk about because um, some people have religions where they're restricted to do certain mm -hmm. things, and uh, you got to know if you're if you're able to um, be up with it. I don't I don't believe people should have two different religions in a in a in a marriage relationship. Like it, I don't know how that works. You should be on one accord. Why? Because you're about to raise a family if you decide to have children. If you don't decide to have children, then I, I don't know. But if you're deciding to have children, you should be on one accord. Do the same type of religion. So that's a very important topic. Um, so someone said, yes, wine and dine while dating. Um... Okay, what was we talking about? Wine or dine while dating. Um, first of all, to me, no one should be whining and dining anybody while dating. You could save that for a committed person. You don't know if anyone's committed while dating. So guys, don't waste your money. Take them out on a to a park, beach, whatever. That's just what I think. Because a lot of women are out there, some, most, whatever you want to call it, they're out there to just reap benefits, but they don't want nothing else from you, but, you know, stuff like that. So be careful. I don't think anyone, anyone should be whining and dining anyone while dating. Don't do it. Okay. Okay, someone said not in bed. You shouldn't be in bed so soon while dating. And someone else said don't go home on the first night. This is regarding the guy I was talking about earlier who lied and said that he was a um, doctor and was able to uh, catfish four women and sexually assaulted them. So don't go home. On the first night, and someone said, not in bed. You shouldn't be in bed so soon while dating. Everyone has sexual um, sexual needs. But, yeah, going home on the first night, people do it. You're just taking a big risk. <laughs> I can't tell you. I can tell you, hey, don't do that. Like, that's crazy. But then people do it and they're married still. So I don't know. I just say be careful. I don't think that that is logical. Because those four those four women who did that got sexually assaulted. And I, and I know a lot of women are getting sexually assaulted because they're going home on the first night. So it's not like a success rate. I'm going to go by statistics it's not a success rate most people that do uh going home um uh, first what is it one night stands or you know going home that's different going home on the first night they're not in relationships most of them now they become sex buddies so if you're looking for a wife or a husband you shouldn't be having a sex buddy 
and then get mad when they um, decide not to pursue you. That sounds like a, a personal problem with you and your decision making. Um, but you don't want to be romanticized. I don't want to be doing all that if, okay, so when I was dating back in the day, I'm getting old, <laughs> when I was dating back in the day, um, just a quick share story, I'm not going to get too deep, but um, going out with, with people who five star, you know, restaurants, whatever, being romantic, roses, whatever. See, that was cute, but that didn't make me like, oh, I want to be with you because you took me to the finest restaurant. Like, none of that matters because you still could be an asshole. <laughs> I don't care where you take me. And Whoever is watching or who will watch this later because I'm going to save it as a video. Um, like, who cares about that? That's not going to... Does that make you a good person because you took me to a nice restaurant? No, it doesn't. And it shouldn't for nobody. The nice things that people do for you does not mean that they're a good person. Everybody should understand that. There's con artists out there, y'all. They're going to do everything that you want them to do just to get something from you and not in a good way. So who gives a damn what they give you, buy you, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So. All right, I'm hitting up an hour, 55 minutes. So I'm going to eventually end this. And I do appreciate everyone who has joined. Thanks for all the comments. You guys help make my live a better experience. I will be doing more of these. Um, please follow my pages. Watch all my videos. Share them. And um, just follow my journey. This is something I've always wanted to do, is talk about relationships, marriages, dating. My page is called Dating to Marriage, which means I help support people from, you know, that transition based off of my success rate and my goals and my um, beliefs, which you guys could find the beliefs on my um, page, diverse earth.com d-y-v-e-r-s-e earth.com go to the section where it says wife coach and there you will see all of what I believe and you could get a good idea of who I am that way um, but it's all about happiness you know, successful, happiness, successful relationships, happy, whatever. Just successful. Successful means that you don't plan on and won't end your relationship marriage. You're going to stick through it and you're going to be a good, good person, a good spouse, good partner to your partner. A lot of people are not doing that. They're complaining all the time about what they didn't do or whatever. No one is going to be perfect. Get you an 80-20. And, and then just roll with it.